Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. Today in the garage, we're gonna be installing our off-grid cargo floor in the back of our 200 series Land Cruiser. So to start things off, before you can get your new floor installed, you do have a little bit of disassembly work. As you can see here, we've kind of already got the seats out of the back of our truck. I have one of them here to kind of show you what's going on with these and how to get yours removed. You should already be pretty familiar with how to operate the seats. So ideally you'll have them in this folded up position and then you're gonna pop off both of the covers you see here. These you'll just need to kind of get in between with a pry tool or in my case, I can just grab it from underneath, but you'll separate these two. There's two locking tabs here and then you just lift to slide this one off and then kind of pulling out and back you should be able to pop the tabs free on this one. Once you get in there, you're gonna have four bolts like this holding each seat down. These can be removed with a 14 millimeter socket. There's two that you see here and kind of one going down and one going through the side of this forward most mounting bracket. With the seat removed, you'll just release the locking lever for the folding feature on the side and then lift up to free it up from these two kind of locating tabs here. And then the seat can be removed from the vehicle. Once you've done that on both sides, yours should look something like what you see here, hopefully without the mangled carpet from a little dog incident. So we'll go ahead and first remove this floor liner. From here, our main goal is to get this rear carpet section out. To start out on that, you wanna remove this rear trim panel. For this, you kinda of just get a hand under one side and start by pulling up. And this is just held in with clips all the way along here. So you can kind of see those along the bottom edge here. And we'll just set this off to the side temporarily. With that removed, you can see the kind of five white clips along this back edge here. The carpet does hook into each of these. So there's a small tab you need to press with your finger while lifting up. There you can see the slot that it locks into. You can do that along all five of these. That should allow you to kind of lift up and free up the edges of the carpet around some of this outer trim section. And then we have to get all four of the little plastic trim pieces out here toward the center. So these you should just be able to get underneath with your fingers or a pry tool if necessary. Pop the clip out that's holding those in and get these removed. From there, you do wanna make sure that you have these hooks out of the way so you can lift the carpet up off of those. There is a slot in the carpet that allows you to free it up from around the seat belt here on the driver's side. And then just lifting up, you should be able to separate it along the front where it's Velcroed together. At that point, you can pull this entire carpet section out of the back of your vehicle. At this point, you can grab that rear trim panel and snap it back into place. And at this time, we can grab our floor frame and get it assembled and start working on getting it into the vehicle. So here we have all of the pieces for the floor frame. Starting at the rear of the vehicle, this is gonna be part number one. All of these parts do have a part number cut out in them, so we'll try and reference those throughout this assembly. This one's easiest to identify because it has the logo cut out in it here that you will see when you open the hatch and tailgate of your vehicle. So we'll start out by taking that number one and then grabbing numbers two and three. You have two of the number two part. Those are both identical pieces, that's why. And then number three, which will be the center. We're gonna bolt those to the back side of this rail in the round cutout holes that you can kind of see there. And we will kind of bring you in closer to see a little bit of this. Everything else that you see over here will kind of just get set off to the side for a few minutes. So starting out with number three here, because it's kind of easiest to identify, this one goes to the center of that number one rail that I mentioned just a moment ago. You wanna find the end that shows this rectangular cutout because that's gonna be a hardware access hole that lines up with this tab later on in the install. I am gonna flip these over just so you can kind of see the bottom side and see the hardware we're working with a little bit better. With it upside down, you'll now need that hardware, which is gonna be these quarter 20 button head bolts that you see here. We provide you with washers for all of these and then quarter 20 serrated flange nuts for the opposite side of things. So you'll line these two up and then you'll pass your bolt through the one and then we will have to kind of fish the nut in underneath this tab here on the center one and get it started on that bolt. 
So then we'll just do the same thing over here on the other side. You'll have two bolts and two holes, obviously, to bolt each of these rails to this kind of main crossbar here. To tighten that hardware, you'll need a 5 30 seconds hex. With the hardware in this orientation, it's pretty easy to kind of access these from this direction with a longer T-handle like I have here. You just wanna make sure as you're tightening these up that you don't have too much variation here so that your panels sit nice and flat later on in the install. So do any minor adjusting you need to, and then we can move on to the next set of rails. So we can now move on to our number two rails. Again, there's two of these, one for each side. They are identical parts. When installing these, just make sure the part number is closer to this number one rail or the logo rail, if you will, because there is a cutout in the bottom of one end that needs to clear some of your factory components inside of the truck. These, again, use that same quarter 20 hardware. The bolt holes for these are a little further out from the tab, so you don't have to contend with that when installing the hardware. So I'll flip this over and get this one bolted in. So from this view, you can just see a little bit better how the nuts install inside of the rail here. And again, we'll just tighten these up using our T-handle. From there, we just repeat that process to install the second number two rail on the opposite side. With all three of these rails installed, we'll now grab the number four rail or crossbar, if you will, to bolt onto this end. Now again, this one has a part number here to make it easy to identify. You're gonna be bolting to this kind of flat vertical face and then if we spin it around you can kind of see you've got a large opening here where the remaining factory carpet will kind of tuck in once this is all installed. This piece is pretty straightforward at this point but just to help you out and make sure there's no confusion to identify top from bottom you're going to be looking for the side that has kind of this longer flange with a bent angled piece here at the back as well as five pre-installed nuts that is the top, that is the section that your floor panels will bolt to later on. That leaves this one that's just kind of full of holes and cutouts to be the bottom that goes down against the floor in the vehicle. Just like on the other end, we're using the same quarter inch button head hardware here. Hardware orientation doesn't really matter down on this end, it just depends what works best for you with the tools you have available and how you can access them. So I'm just running them from this end in toward the center of the frame with the nuts here on the inside because that will allow me to access them with my T-handle from over here later on. Your assembled frame, once you get all of that tight, should look like what you see here. And then we can bolt on these outer trim panels. Now these should be pretty easy to identify because they're only gonna install one way and they kind of match the cutouts on each side of the vehicle in there. But just to help you out, part number six, goes out on the driver's side, part number seven goes out on the passenger side. Now these are both gonna install pretty much identical to one another. They use four mounting locations, so three holes on this side and one here on the top. This flange, if you will, overlaps the top of that number one rail, and then you can drop your bolt down from the top and install a nut on the bottom side. Then if you want to, you can flip this over or you can just reach underneath now that you know what all this hardware is and get it lined up and your bolts installed into all three of these holes. Now this panel, once everything is installed, we want to be level with the actual floor panels that bolt to our frame. So it will be raised up from the top of this rail when it's flipped over in the other orientation. That should leave it pretty much even where the two meet right here. So kind of make sure that's even. And then we did switch to a 530 seconds Allen driver on a ratchet right here, just because we can't really spin our T-handle once we get up here toward the larger section of this panel. Once you have all of those bolts tight, you can repeat that process on the opposite side. With both of those panels now on, we're gonna set this in the back of the vehicle and use it as a guide to mark and drill some of our holes that we're gonna be using to secure this to the body of the vehicle. So you'll need to take the existing or remaining carpet and kind of tuck it under the second row seats like we've already done in here. You just kind of roll it over and find a spot to tuck it in temporarily until this is in place. And then the rivet nuts you'll find in your bolt pack We'll be using those after we get the holes drilled. So we'll kind of just slant this up on its side and slide it in and set it down and lining it up. We'll be using kind of just the perimeter as our guide 
and how it fits to the frame itself. If you are already running our cargo basket back here with our rear window molly panels and everything, the cargo basket will have to be removed, but the upper shelf, like you can see up here, can stay in place. Because we do have to kind of angle this up quite a bit to get it in and clear these outside wings. But once you get it set down on one side, you can kind of let the whole thing rest down in here. With the floor frame down in here, you now need to locate it properly before marking and drilling those holes we keep talking about. So as you can see, it kind of floats around a little bit. Basically the first thing you want to do is slide it all the way back until the back of rail number four at what is now the front edge, but it's tight to the front edge of this passenger compartment air duct that we have kind of on the floor here. That'll kind of help square it up as well as locate it so that the holes you're drilling up there are on the proper raised rib in the floor that you'll see in a few minutes. From there, you just wanna make sure that everything is located properly from side to side. So you're just kind of checking all of the gaps along these outside panels and making sure they're as even as possible. And then you can adjust side to side as needed. Once you're confident and happy with your frame placement, we then need to mark these holes. Along this back edge, there's just three, one down in the center of this rectangle cutout on our center rail, and then the others are out in each of these two corners. And for our initial markings, we're just gonna be using a Sharpie or a marker, if you will, right in here. Now holding your frame so that it hopefully does not move throughout this process, you can reach down through this cutout and trace out the slot down here. And then moving out to the outside, you'll wanna do the same thing, kinda of trace the slot out here the best you can. You can see out here that we're dealing with some factory sealant, if you will, that is sitting underneath this tab. So anywhere that this happens on all of your mounting tabs on the floor frame, that will need to be removed. So we're gonna trace it out as well so that we can kinda of cut it or carve it out of there with kind of a knife and a scraper should do the trick. So we'll repeat this process over on the other side and then we'll go to the front of our frame and mark the four mounting holes up there. Up here, your four mounting holes are gonna be down through these kind of tombstone shaped cutouts. So again, drop your marker down through here, holding your frame secure and mark each of these. At this point, once you're confident you have all of those marked out well, all of your mounting holes and drill locations are now marked out and you can remove this frame temporarily from your vehicle. Now up here in the front, once you get that frame out of the way, you should see all four of your mounting holes land on this kind of raised rib section that runs horizontally through the vehicle here. You can see this section does have quite a bit of that factory sealant, if you will, on here. And all of that needs to be removed all the way along this rib so that that can sit nice and flat to the floor. Because of that, and because you can maybe see that some of your holes land on top of that sealant, or your marks, if you will, you're gonna wanna mark these out a little bit better before getting this removed. So ideally, you'll center punch it good, and then maybe even get a small eighth inch pilot hole in each location before you go scraping at this. That being said, if you can identify this well enough as far as this rib, you could just remove all of this before you even get the floor frame in and kind of omit this backwards step. So I'm now gonna come through and center punch all of our holes. On the slotted holes, I'm just going toward the center of it from front to rear here. With those marked out, I'm gonna go through and drill pilot holes at all of them. Here I have an eighth inch drill bit. This one does have a drill stop installed on here. If you have these, we recommend using them just to make sure that you can't kind of over penetrate there and damage anything down underneath the vehicle. But if you're cautious and not pushing too hard on your drill, you should be able to achieve pretty much the same thing. So we'll drill all of these pilot holes out now. We'll work our way around and do this at all of our hole mounting locations. And just make sure as you're doing this to kind of come back through and clean up all the metal shavings. Once you have a pilot hole drilled at all of these locations, you can now come in here with a scraper. You can really do this with a screwdriver or something like that if you had to, but this works quite well. The pilot hole is gonna allow you to scrape this off without removing any marks. So again, make sure you have those first. Then I'm just gonna go kind of 
a little bit outside of the mark where I traced that tab and just kind of carve out a rough line where we want to remove this material. That'll just give us some adjustability on the floor when we're reinstalling everything. And I'm just gonna take that all the way across in this location and then coming back under one of the edges, this stuff chips out of here pretty easily. So it's not gonna take a lot of effort. It's just gonna be a little tedious to go around all of your hole locations and then you wanna come back with a shop back or something and clean all of this out. Once you have that done at all of your hole locations, you're now gonna to need to open these up to 17 30 seconds to accept the rivet nut. In order to do that, we do recommend kind of stepping up through multiple smaller drill bit sizes and then finishing off with that larger bit to kind of get the cleanest hole here. So I'm just starting out now with a quarter inch drill bit. And from there, just continue working your way up through those stepped bits to achieve that final hole size. Now when drilling larger holes like this on somewhat thin sheet metal, it is easy to kind of tear that sheet metal out and kind of oblong the hole, which you don't want to do when you're trying to install a rib nut. So take your time here, kind of use light pressure as you're getting this final hole size drilled and do your best to keep this nice and steady. Once you have that drilled out and you have a nice clean hole, just take a rib nut and double check that it's gonna seat in there nicely. You can then repeat that process on all the remaining holes. We provide you with a tool to get these rib nuts installed. If you install a lot of your own accessories, you may already have one of the larger, more commercial tools, if you will, and you may be familiar with how they install. If not, this will work just fine to get this floor installed. So what this is, is just a long 5 16 bolt. We've got the rib nut on the end, and then a couple oversized washers, an oversized nut that that bolt can pass through. And with this assembled, kind of in the fashion you see here, along with an 11 16 wrench and a half inch socket, these should be relatively easy to install. Once you have it assembled like this and your first rib nut on here, just kind of hand tight, we recommend grabbing some black RTV and applying it to the outside of the rib nut. This will do a couple things. It will help hold the rib nut just a little bit in this whole location once everything is said and done here, but it will also help prevent any corrosion, any moisture or anything like that from getting up inside of your vehicle with these installed. So go ahead and pop that down into your first hole. So the 11 16 wrench is gonna hold the oversized nut here in the center, and then I have an impact to tighten up this bolt. You do wanna use a little bit of caution here. Obviously, I have a fairly large impact that I'm using, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this down using the lowest setting and kind of pay attention to the sound to make sure we're not over-tightening this bolt. And then holding the wrench and running the impact in as if we were tightening the bolt, we can compress that rib nut against the sheet metal of our floor. Once your impact is laboring fairly heavy and you can kind of tell that it's tightening up, go ahead and stop, back this out, and get the tool out of the way. Some of this might have some silicone residual left over on it. So make sure you're not getting that on your interior or trim panels. And then basically you'll be looking in here to make sure that that fully compressed and seated tight to the floor sheet metal. If you're happy with the way that looks, it looks like everything's compressed and tight there. You can simply wipe up any of that excess sealant and then repeat that process on all the remaining holes. If not, you can always reinstall the tool and tighten that just a little bit further if needed. Once you get all of these rib nuts installed and you're happy with that, we will quickly need to install this edge trim on those outer trim panels or wing panels of your frame. So I'll show you that real quick. Now this process is pretty much the same on either side. I've already got that one installed. There is a little cutout that you'll see kind of on each end of this. You're basically sitting this down inside of that cutout and then following the edge 
all the way out to the other one where you will have to trim off just a little bit of excess length. To use this, you will need to kind of manually spread open one end to get it started here on the panel. And then just holding it pretty much tight to that notch, you can walk it all the way along, essentially spreading that out as you go. When you get out to the end close to that notch, you can just kind of estimate where you need to cut it and using some side cuts or sheet metal shears like I have here, just trim that off and press it the rest of the way in. And now we can lay this frame back in and get it lined up with our rib nuts. Once you have this back down in here, if you've done everything right to this point, it should pretty much just sit in and line up with your rib nuts and kind of center up on its own. You may just have to pull it back again to line those up. You'll then want to find your black 5 16 button head bolts. There will be washers to go along with these. And then you'll work your way through and start all of these essentially by hand. You will have to kind of use a tool down through some of those cutouts, but what I'm saying here is not to tighten the floor frame down into your rib nuts yet. Now the slotted holes in the frame should provide you enough adjustability to get all of those started. And once you have that and all of those are in place, just grab your 316s once again and work your way around tightening this frame into your vehicle. Now, once you have the floor frame tightened down into the vehicle, if you're just installing the floor, whether you're using this as kind of a camping platform or a rear seat delete or whatever the case there, it's as easy as now finding the two floor panels and just bolting them in place using the provided quarter 20 button head hardware. However, if you bought this to mount accessories to the floor, kind of the way we intend, such as your fridge slide or a combination of drawers, you do have just a little more work to do here. Now you'll see in the floor panel, there's a series of slots and holes. Those are used to mount the nut tabs that I have here in hand. These are what you're gonna actually bolt your accessories down to. The longer ones that I have over here are gonna be provided with your floor. The smaller ones you'll only get and only need to install if you're installing a fridge slide on your cargo platform. So starting with the longer of the two, the way these get installed is you'll need to have one of your quarter 20 button heads. We do provide washers for these as well. You'll take the tab and slide it in on the bottom side of the floor panel. And in the center hole location, install one of your bolts. You can then just loosely start one in either of the outside holes to hold that from rotating. And then you may have to kind of mock this stuff up once or twice to figure out where you want these because you do have some slotted side to side adjustability here. But once you've got that figured out and know where you want them, it's just a matter of locking down this center bolt with a 530 seconds and removing the bolt out here that we were using for alignment. Once you have all four of these in place and aligned properly, this panel will be set up to accept drawers and you can then install it into the vehicle and use these outer holes to bolt the drawer frames down. As for the fridge slide nut tabs, they're gonna be these smaller ones once again. These will line up on the outside edges of the slot with the pre-installed nut toward the outside. So you'll line the pre-installed nut up with this outer hole and loosely install one bolt. You can then take a You can then take a second bolt and washer along with a serrated flange nut and install it here on the inside. In this location, the outside bolt is now acting as just your alignment pin essentially. You will then take your 532 hex and tighten up the inside bolt here and remove this one. Just a couple quick things you wanna pay attention to when getting set up for your accessories. Here along what will be the inside edge of the panel, you've kinda of got half circle holes all the way along here. That's what actually bolts the panel down to the floor frame in the vehicle. So pay attention to that, make sure you got your panel set up as a left and right, and that way you get all your nut tabs on the appropriate side. Other than that, these fridge slide holes are slotted ever so slightly as well. 
So go ahead and get your fridge slide assembled and just take a double check measurement when getting these lined up and installed. And that way you don't have to take these back out at all later on when getting everything set up. In our case, at least at this time, we're not gonna be mounting any accessories to this floor. So just pay attention, look for the part number cutout on these panels. That's gonna go all the way in toward the front of the vehicle. And then again, with those half circle cutouts toward the center, we can slide our panels in and get them lined up. A couple tips to help you out here. You want to get both of your floor panels in kind of at the same time so you can line them up together and you're not gonna be fighting the washers to try and get the other panel underneath them on these center holes. So from here, you just want to work your way around and install your quarter inch button heads into all of the pre-installed nuts that were in the floor frame that we saw earlier on. When doing this step, just make sure to get everything started by hand before you tighten anything down so that you're not fighting any alignment issues there. For very minor misalignments, you can use just your Allen wrench and slide it down between the panel and into that pre-installed nut and just lightly kind of move these around. So I'm just a little bit off on this outside one, for example, let me grab a bolt with a washer here and then I will use the center hole to just very gently pry back on the panel, which then allows me to line this one up out in this corner. For very minor misalignment issues, you can just take your Allen that you're using to tighten things up and slide it down into one of the bolt holes. So between the panel and into that pre-installed nut and just very lightly pull it in the direction that you need to. Too much pressure here could potentially pop that pre-installed nut out of the floor frame, which you wouldn't want to have happen. So use your discretion here. You don't want to be pulling super hard on this. If you have any issues like that, feel free to give us a call on the customer service side of things. From there, just take the bolt in that misaligned hole, which for me is out here on the corner. And just that little bit of gentle prying in the center here. Let me get that lined up. That'll kind of hold everything else in alignment and I should be able to come back and install this one now. Once you get to that point and have all your hardware started, just double check for appearance purposes that your panels are aligned here and out here, and then you can work your way around and tighten everything up. The last thing we need to take care of here is the remaining carpet up on the front edge. So for that, you're basically just gonna start by rolling it. And once you get it kind of short enough, you will press that down. You wanna see just a little bit of pressure against it right here. And then you tuck it in to the front section of your floor. You'll come back and tuck as much of this as you can back under the factory trim pieces along the outside edges, which makes for a pretty nice, pretty smooth transition up into your floor. Once you've done that, this install is complete and you can see it leaves you with a nice clean look here inside of your cargo compartment. Other than that, it's really just getting your accessories bolted down and installed. For that, more information on those and how to get them assembled and installed, check out the individual product pages where you purchase those accessories for installation videos on those accessories. Other than that, if you guys have any questions at all about this install or anything else we offer here at Victory 4x4, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always send us an email at info at victory4x4.com or call us at 269-459-8447.